Miss Elizabeth Ng asks why herd immunity has not kicked in when more than 80% of the population has been uh, vaccinated. I think right at the start we said, you know, if 50 or 60% were vaccinated, herd immunity would kick in. So why hasn't it kicked in? Liang, would you like to start? Yeah, I think this question depends on the transmissibility of the virus, which is this number that we call R0, how many people one infected case can pass on to on average. And right at the start, um, the R0 of the virus was about three. And now it has, we think that the Delta variant has an R0 of about six. That Doubly. means that, mm. that's right. Yes, yes. So essentially, you would need to hire, you would need to vaccinate a far larger proportion of the population, even if the vaccine was 100% effective at preventing transmission. You have to vaccinate like 90% of the population. But as Eng Yong has mentioned, because the vaccine is not effective enough at preventing transmission, even if you vaccinate 100% of the population now, there will still be ongoing transmission of the virus. Uh, to, to others, although in a mild form. So that may not be something that we should be too concerned about. Yeah, and I'll add, you know, I think Liang's absolutely right, but if we can get 100% of the uh, population to be vaccinated, we've solved all our, all our problems. So, you know, you will get, it, was, it would not mean that COVID is completely eliminated. You will still get cases because the vaccine is not 100%, but they'll be mild and, and, and you will cut down transmission uh, remarkably, but but of course, the you know trying to get to that hundred percent is how it is where the the challenge truly is. But herd immunity doesn't mean that there is no infection, right? Herd immunity steep merely no means case. it doesn't rise yeah. at a steep slope, right? Right, right. No outbreak, no outbreaks. So uh, if you have eight hundred infected and it stays at eight hundred every day, that's okay. So it depends on where where you want to set this threshold. I think we accept that. You know, the you asked earlier, what is endemicity, and and the the true answer is nobody really knows, right? It depends on the society. In fact, we we once had this uh, philosophical debate, right? What what is an epidemic? And the best answer that everyone that I think everyone now uses, including the US CDC, is an epidemic is what is in excess of what you expect. In other words, you have to set some expectation, and you call that that's endemic. And so, in other words, there's no hard answer. It's very much like what Li Yang said. What, what price are you willing to accept? That's going to be an endemicity. Mm -hmm. So, depending on where you set that threshold, that is where also, you know, you have to now say that proportion of, of our population will need to be vaccinated. I think the long and short of it is that one, a vaccine does protect against severe disease, but it doesn't protect against infection for long enough, nor the mild uh, form of disease. Uh, and, and that the vaccines that we have now do not fully simulate an infection. That's what would need for long-term immunity. It just shows you a very small segment of the virus. So, so the, I think herd immunity in the way that it's understood theoretically, we should forget about it for COVID. We, instead, it's probably more fruitful for us to think about how do we best deal with this disease moving forward so that we continue to learn as much as we can uh, and, and face the challenges that will come in terms of new variants, in terms of you know, long-term problems and all that. But to expect that we're going to be able to somehow achieve herd immunity this year and then you know, in the mind of many, with the idea of herd immunity means my problem is solved, we're done, right? I think that will never happen for COVID.